On this week's Royal Saltwater Fishing, we're heading back to Marathon in the fabulous Florida Keys. The goal, light tackle fish on the patch reefs for a wide variety of fish, and wait till you see what we catch. This fish just woke up. He realized he didn't like where he was heading. Woo-hoo-hoo! Coming around. There's a the leader. There's a the leader. Look at size oh, that mug, yeah. Jimmy. Holy. Look Hard to contain this. myself when you see a mutton like that. Got a nice one. Big mangrove. <laughs> Got him. It's one exciting episode you do not want to miss. George Poverum was world of saltwater fishing, celebrating 21 years of fishing television excellence. Big fish don't stand a chance. Marathon in the fabulous Florida Keys. Here it was, the second week of December, right after the passage of a cool front throughout the Florida Keys chain. Now the good thing is when the water temperatures cool, these patch reefs start to thrive with a variety of species, ranging from yellowtail, mangrove snapper, mutton snapper, groupers, and of course, in the wintertime, you can never discount mackerel. I was joining up with Jimmy Gagliardini. We're gonna head out to fish the patch reefs for a variety of fish. Uh, you know, we specialize in, in you know, reef fishing and, uh, and pelagic fishing as well, but a lot of what we do is involves reef fishing, you know, fishing the channel homes, to patch reefs, to the deeper reefs, as well as the wrecks. I met up with Jimmy at the Ferro Blanco Marina. So the chuckle was, is here we go with the jackets. We're complaining that we have a temperature in the low 70s. The rest of the country is either getting snowed on or under frigid conditions. But yet, here we are with our jackets. It's wintertime in the Florida Keys. And we knew as soon as we pretty much rounded the bend and got on out to uh, the patch reefs, that Florida Keys sunshine would go high in the sky, that it would warm up uh, considerably. As you go out, you pass through the, the channel humps that are on the inside of Hawks Channel, which is a natural channel that runs up and down the Keys. And just outside of that is the inside section of the, of the barrier reef that runs from Miami all the way to the Tortugas. And you have the outside patches, which is just before the drop off that goes down to 100 feet relatively fast. A lot of the fish will congregate on that drop. And they go up into shallower water, back into the deeper water. They go back and forth and uh, looking for for a food source. Oh yeah, this feels like a good fish. I have looking like it. Oh, he's doing good with him, Jimmy. Oh yeah, got him under control now. I, it yeah, is a mutton. Yes, it is, is it? It should be. And it is. It is a mutton. Nice. Perfect. That's one way to start it off. He did good. Yeah. Nice and plump. I sure. will give, give him the use since you're the one who caught it. It's looking good. Yeah, yeah. Solid job, too. A little circle yeah, jig. man. Here, I'll let you take it off. I'm going to watch my rod back there. Okay. Now, was that on, on its way down or was that on the bottom when you. That, was on, that was on the bottom. Yeah. That was on the bottom. That's He's a pretty nice. one, isn't he? Should be more. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's a start. Good one. I like it, Jimmy. As you get nice. into the winter months, the patches always tend to hold a lot more fish. As that water starts to cool off inshore, those fish tend to move out towards the patches and get out from, from around the islands and in, in the shallow water where that temperature will spike on a cold front really fast. You'll see a lot of those fish move out to the reef. See what we have here? Grouper? Yep, a release grouper yeah. coming in. Uh, all right, got the rod bending on there. Hungry too, Valley is almost as large as he is. Whoa. I always do that. And now he came to life. It started off fairly quickly, too. We had a, a little bout with some groupers, uh, a little bit on the undersize, but still a fun fish to catch, some black grouper. And you could tell pretty much immediately when you do hook up, you get that thump, the rod tick gets pulled down, and you wind tight. And if the fight takes you straight down, that's definitely the, the work of a grouper, more of an up and down, bulldogging kind of a fight. All right, all right, all right. Fighting very grouperish, huh? Hey, uh, got a couple of surges through from it. And here it is, here, another here grouper. Here it is. Going in a release. You got him? I got him. It's a, 
<laughs> That's a good looking little black. Barely hooked, but, but hooked well enough, huh? Yeah. All right, you're going back. He'll be going in the box in a couple of years. All right, not Two today. Years. You're a lucky one. What? You got another line Yes, there. he does have a line. How can I get that? Yeah, okay. I got, All right. look at this. See, I got this out of there, too. Did him a favor. All right. George Borgoromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. We'll be right back. It's patch where you fishing at its finest. Captain Jimmy Gagliardini and I are dropping live value for groupers, mangrove, and mutton snappers. We're off Marathon in the Florida Keys. You know, a lot of times when the mangroves are on the reef, they love ballyhoo. It's a, it's a fish that's tough for them to catch, but if, uh, if a mackerel cuts one in half, they're always there to pick up the other half. With the abundance of ballyhoo behind the boat, Jimmy says, I'm gonna throw a net on them. Jimmy threw one big net on the ballyhoo, procured a lot of them. Then we started hooking the live ballyhoo on our jigs and dropping them back down. And that certainly didn't take long at all. I'm guessing that's looking more like a snapper. Mangrove. Oh, a nice mangrove. Oh, right, man, you got the mangroves figured. Ready? Yeah, if you are, oh, yeah. <laughs> Check, Check that it. out, huh? Oh, man, you got it wired up, huh? <laughs> you betcha. That was on the floor carving, on a jig. In a jig. Yeah. Lo love the way it got, just turns that around and. <laughs> Head first. It is. And he got it. Jimmy brought one big mangrove in the boat, goes back down. Two, three minutes later, bam, his rod goes down. The same type of a fight, good struggle brings up another beautiful mangrove snapper. And here, he, clearly, you can see where they ate it head first. Goes down head first and down the hatch. But that's a nice snapper there. It is. A, when, when you feel them starting to mess around with that, do you open the bill of the jig and let them swallow? On a ballyhoo, or? I do. do you? That's okay. a big bait, you know, and I want them to turn it around, suck it down yep. as far as they can before I come tight on them. The mangrove snapper bite was really good. And to be honest, I could sit all day and catch these mangrove snapper. They were all great size, again, incredible eating, but the patch reefs always have different ideas. You get your mangrove snapper bite, you catch your share of those, then it seems like things change around. Here comes another species of fish. Case in point, Jimmy's rod goes smoking off. And this thing is just smoking. You could tell initially it's a king. And by the way, it kept peeling off that braid. You could tell it was a big kingfish. Whoa, all right, Jimmy. Is that, is that the mono? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Sounds like I need the gaff again, don't I? <laughs> OK, coming around. Come on down, Jimmy. It's quite the obstacle course. You get your may exercise. Well try, may as well throw a handful of marbles under my feet. OK, so you know, I casted a jig out there, again, trying to get it to the bottom. And another kingfish grabbed it, except this one was big. This fish just woke up. He did. I saw him, too. He realized he didn't like where he was heading. Fight you deep. Yeah, he's a nice one. I had a gaff ready. Finally, it's coming in, and I could see the fish start to come a little bit closer. OK. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! Fish came by the boat. We nailed it, brought the fish in the boat. We're going to definitely have some smoked kingfish in our future. All right, man. OK, now this was all on the fluorocarbon leader? That and, was. And, and what, the jig? Just a jig and 30-pound fluorocarbon leader. They're getting wise to the wire. They're a smarter fish than they used to be. At least around here, they are. Uh, you throw a wire out there, a lot of times they won't even look at it. A number of attractions when you're in Marathon, you decide to take the day off. The Turtle Hospital, without a doubt, you definitely have to take this in. It, it's a great facility in that they take injured sea turtles and they rehabilitate them until they are healthy enough to be released back into the uh, ecosystem. If a turtle is injured to the point where it cannot survive out in the wild, they will keep it there and uh, keep it as an exhibit. You could take the tour and see everything from juvenile turtles to mature turtles. The Turtle Hospital is without a doubt an educational facility in that you could learn 
all about the different turtles, their migratory habits, how they interact with the Florida Keys. It's definitely worthy of spending two or three hours and taking in a turtle hospital. George Pofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Simred. Go with Simred and go with confidence. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. George will be right back. Cooler water temperatures in the Florida Keys heat up the action on the shallow patch reefs. I'm off Marathon in the Florida Keys, catching groupers, mangrove and mutton snappers with Captain Jimmy Gagliardini. Well, there we go. There we go. There it goes. Kingfish or mackerel, or he's over here now. Uh -huh. yep. Coming across. Coming around. Coming across. All right, we're clear. The trap buoy over there. There he comes, Jimmy. We're getting a little closer. Coming around. There he is. And it is a kingfish. Beautiful. All right. And what luck with that, too, getting that circle in there. Yeah. We just missed cutting them <laughs> off with that 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. Look at that. Well, the, the kingfish that we ran into uh, on that day were, it was almost accidental. It's not really what we were targeting. We were targeting more, uh, you know, the mutton snappers and, uh, and groupers. Generally, I like to use a light wire leader, but if the water's really clear, it's very difficult to get them to eat, eat a wire because they can see all of it in that clear water. And, uh, you know, casting out a jig head, letting it sink to the bottom, yeah, you get cut off. You'll get cut off numerous times, but a lot of times you'll hook a real nice fish on that jig. He's hooked in the lip where he's not getting his jaws on the line. You'll, you'll, a lot of times you'll land him. Oh, oh he did it. He ate it as I was I winding it up. Oh. Another mangrove, maybe? I think so. It's feeling like it. He wanted the rest of that thing. He had already chewed it up a couple times. Staying straight up yeah, and down. Yeah, it's getting grouperish now. Uh, here it is. You were correct. It is a black grouper. I don't think he's legal, but still a nice fish to catch. Still a nice fish to catch. Yeah. It's amazing how big those things actually grow, the black grouper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at how he's covered in parasites. They're like fleas all over him. You can see them all moving yeah. around. And uh, that's what those cleaner fish are taking off down there when they're sitting there waiting in line. In addition to the groupers and the goodbye to mangrove snappers, the mutton started to turn on. And you look at the patch reefs, as relatively shallow as they are, to be able to come out here and catch quality size mutton snapper and to do it on light tackle, it's just fun. Oh! All right, you want to trade pipe this Oh, way? yeah, here we go. Oh, this is a good one. What could it be? Still kicking his tail real hard, so should be a snapper. I don't think it's a grouper. Oh, it's a mutton. mutton. A mutton. Well, one more circle, belt. One more circle. There we go. All right. Mutton snapper it is. Who will actually guarantee with your net when you... Again, that was, that was on a ballyhoo. You know, letting them eat. Jimmy gets the first mutton in, definitely a keeper, made its way to the fish box. Very nice. It is too. All right. Yeah, and again, that was ballyhoo, just opening the bale, letting him eat it for three, four, five seconds. Close the bale, wind tight, and you're on. Oh, uh, just one more step to the whole procedure. Let's open up the fish box. Let's open up the fish box. The muttons, when they come in, they're generally in, in small packs. You know, they'll be anywhere from one fish to, to five or six. A lot of times you'll hook two or three within a few minutes down the ledge, right down that sandy area. I saw that, Jimmy. Cutting I saw him in. come up find the value. Oh, no, he's in the bottom. Oh. OK, well, he's, not back. he's back out. Come on. Oh, he got his face in there. If he can get his face in there, he'd kick his tail a little harder and get his head in there, and then the body's going in. That was his last shot right there. Now, if we can just keep him on the hook, he won't get us in the bottom. That's over. Now it's all about getting him up the rest of the way. Mm. Coming around. Yeah, he's coming under here. Oh, here. And there he big, is. Big mutton, or a group mutton. Look at the size oh, of that mutton, yeah. Jimmy. Holy, that's what's follow us up. Jimmy! <laughs> 
Look at where he scraped you when he got you down there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look Hard at to this. contain myself when you see a mutton like that. And again, oh. that was 20 pound liter. Yeah, 20 pound on the spool, 20 pound liter, 20 pound fluorocarbon. Ballyhoo, little drop back. You see him just running out. in, getting you into the ground. And he Where's actually got me in there. Check that out. You see where he where scuffed he got it you up. In there? Scuffed up his head. When we ended up catching that big mutton, you know, you, you could you could tell it was a bigger fish. Came tight on him, and immediately he made a big run right down the the water was clear, and you could just see him running down the edge of that reef. He, he, he was a bigger fish, so he had the advantage, and uh, and he lost that battle. This is what he got mm -hmm. you down, and look at the tail. He was in there. He, he was trying to in get there. in there, and just turned him around, and got him back out. You just can't give up on him. You got to keep working on him, working on him. Incredible and, uh, mutton snapper, Jimmy. That was like, wow. George's Tackle Locker brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Mercury's joystick piloting provides boats with two to six Mercury Verado outboards, 360 degrees of flexibility to move sideways, diagonally, or even spin on their own axis. Simply move the joystick in the direction you want to go. Any fine tuning is accomplished by simply twisting the joystick to the desired heading, otherwise known as yaw control. Of its many advantages, ease of docking tops the list. Upon reaching our slip, we begin backing in using joystick control. The goal is to first reach the windward piling and retrieve that bow line. This was accomplished by simply twisting the joystick and moving it in that direction with just enough momentum to reach the piling. Joystick also enables the boat to ease up to and rest against the piling giving a deckhand ample time to either secure a line to it or retrieve one. I pretty much relied on the joystick to remain centered up until both bow lines were cleated off. I then slightly moved the joystick straight to port, bringing the boat close enough to acquire the port side spring line. Once the spring line was secured, it was just a matter of using a joystick to crab backwards and the port just enough to reach those stern lines and then recentering the boat to take possession of the starboard stern line. That's all there was to it. Docking with virtually one hand and Mercury's joystick control. Mercury Performance Stats, Marathon Florida Keys, Power, Triple Mercury Verado 4 to horsepower outboards. Speed, 40 miles per hour. Total miles, 52. Total fuel burn, 55 gallons. George Pope Robles World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Visit flakeys.com. ACR. The leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Order yours today at papaspilar.com. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. I've always said convenience is a big factor if you're trailering your boat down to the fabulous Florida Keys. Marathon, it could rarely get any more convenient in that you have a public ramp on the bay side at 33rd Street. And not even a quarter of a mile away, once you launch your boat, you have the Ferro Blanco Marina. Full service marina, they have adequate parking for trailers. Then they have the hotel facility. The rooms, well appointed, comfortable, all the amenities, but it's just a unique complex and that everything is here. They have a bar and grill, poolside, and they also have inside dining. And best of all, you come down each morning, you jump in your boat, you go fish, you come back at the end of the day, everything is here. You don't have to leave the premise unless you absolutely want to. And if you're thinking about trailering down a boat, check it out, you won't be disappointed. Feeling like a snapper, kicking around. Should be a mangrove. Oh, how about a double oh, up? A double header. Double up. Oh. No, he dropped me. Oh, yeah, you've got a nice one you got coming up there. Let me know if you need a net. Big mangrove. Yeah, you get, you're good Ready? with him. Wait, wait. <laughs> got him. So, what a day. We wrapped up uh, incredible light tackle fishing, great mixture of fish, yellowtail, mangrove snapper, mutton snapper, king mackerel, and released a handful of groupers. You know, I always say one of the things that really that really keeps me in the charter business is, is seeing the, the joy that people have when they land a nice fish and uh, 
and it gives you an opportunity to just, just forget about what's going on in the world, enjoy life, and enjoy a day on the water. You know, and that's, and that's really what it's all about. The Florida Keys definitely did not disappoint on this trip. So as we turned the Mark 6 back in, went back to the Ferro Blanco Marina, dock, it was fish cleaning time, and uh, it just goes to show you how good these patch reefs can be during those cooler winter months. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.